Hi there. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to understand about dynamic hedging, or we can also call it the delta neutral portfolio. All right. So, uh, what exactly we are going to do here is we are going to build up uh, one or two strategies, and those strategies will tell you that even if the, there is a movement in the stock price, your total portfolio value would remain the same. All right. So, with your long stock position, maybe you'll have to add certain uh, option position to make sure that your total portfolio value remains the same. However, there are certain drawbacks in this strategy which we need to understand and see what exactly if we re really apply it in the real life, you know, what uh, drawbacks we will be facing once we do that. So, the idea is very simple. Say for example, you have got, you have gone long stock, alright, you have gone long stock. So, along with that, what you can do is you can short some call options, alright. And with these two positions in your portfolio, you can assure that the value of portfolio will not change as the stock price changes. Or you can also, you know, work it out using long stock along with long put. Or right, this is nothing but your protective put. But here you can, you can use long stock with your short call and you can make sure that your portfolio value does not really change. So when you have long stock, in that case, uh, given that, you know, if the stock price is going up uh, at the very same time, you have taken that uh, short call position. So the person who might have taken the long call position, he would start gaining once the stock prices are going up. And since you're making some gains here in the long stock part, all right. Uh, that gains would be nullified once you know that short call uh, the long call position starts to make money in front of us however it is not that simple but we need to understand how this really works and when things starts to go down all right you'll keep you'll get to keep the premium of the short call uh, and you'll start losing money on your long stock but uh, once we you know keep on dynamically hedging our portfolio what we'll do is we'll sell more options or we'll short more calls once things starts to go down. However, that is a little complicated. We'll understand it with an example first and then we'll move forward to those complications. Yes, first thing first that we need to understand is say for example, I'm holding 1000 stocks. All right, now with 1000 stocks in my portfolio, how many call options do I need to short so that I can assure that my portfolio value does not really change. All right, to know that what we are going to use is we are going to use the delta that we have understood so far. That, that is why it is known as delta hedging. So number of stocks, uh, shares that you have, uh, you know, that you want to hedge divided by the delta of call option. And when you divide these two, you'll get what? You'll, you'll get the number of short calls. So this is something that you need to calculate. That is number of shares hedged divided by what? Delta of call option. In the very same way, what you need to do with puts is number, if you want to calculate, if you want to go via the second route, all right. Uh, if you want to calculate the number of long puts that you need to have, so what you need to do is the number of shares that you want to hedge divided by the delta of put option. You need to have a negative sign here. Why? Because the delta of put option would be negative. All right, we know that the delta of put option is nothing but between minus one to zero. All right, so that is one thing that uh, I want all of you to understand. And uh, let's understand this with an example. It will make things clearer for us. So say for example, if you have 60,000 stocks in your portfolio, all right, of any XYZ company, if you have 60,000 stocks, the price of those stocks currently is $50, that is a spot price, all right. The exercise price at which, you know, we can see the call option is $50, all right, this is nothing but the exercise price. And the call option is available for $4, all right, the call option is available for $4. And the delta we have currently is 0 0.6, all right. So delta is what, by the way, delta is nothing but the moment in the option vis-a-vis -vis $1 change in stock. So say for example, if your stock is moving by $1, uh, in, in the case of call option, your option will move by another $0.6. All right. So that is the meaning of delta. All right. So the first thing first that we need to calculate is determine the number of call options that we need to hedge the portfolio. So here what we need to do is we need to short these call options. and let's figure it out that how many call options we need to short so for that we'll be going to the formula number of shares that we need to hedge so we have somewhere about 60,000 shares that we need to hedge all right and the delta is something that we need to use in the denominator so 60,000 divided by 0 0.6 all right so here you'll get one lakh options so these many call options you need to short here for a thumb rule you always remember that whenever you are using uh, dynamic hedging or delta neutral hedging strategy, what you need to understand here is that the number of options that you'll get will always be greater than the number of stocks. All right, the volatility in options is much more greater than compared to your stocks. So you'll have to work out with more number of options, you know, compared to your stocks. So that is one thing that you need to understand. Now, the first question is done pretty simple, determine the call options to hedge the portfolio. Now, the thing that I have been saying repeatedly that uh, given these two positions in our helm, 
we would not be seeing any change in the value of our portfolio. So to make sure that we do not really see that, let's understand it. Uh, calculate the effect on portfolio with one dollar increase in the stock price. With one dollar increase in stock price. So here we are having two positions. One is of long stock and the other one is of short call. All right, I'm working around with this one. So long stock, my I am having stocks worth fifty dollars, and now they have increased by one dollar more. So now they are of fifty one dollars. So I'm making one dollar gain. On how many stocks? I have somewhere about sixty thousand stocks. So sixty thousand multiplied by one dollar. This is the gain I am making. All right, this is a positive impact on my portfolio. Now here there is a one dollar increase in the stock price. And given that there is a one dollar increase in the stock price, the change in the call option would be by how much? By 0.6. The change in the call option price would be by how much? Would be by 0.6. So it would become 4.6. Let right? the idea is pretty simple. That the call option price would change from four dollars to 4.6 dollars, and this impact is coming because there is a one dollar movement in the stock in the positive direction, and that is why call option del call option is also moving in the upward direction. All right. So 0.6 is the difference all right we had shorted these call options all right we had shorted these call options and these call options have actually increased in value all right humne koi cheez short ki thi aur wo cheez ki value bad gayi hai so we are losing money here how much money are we losing here 0.6 dollars and how many uh, options do we have we have 1 lakh options so the total amount turns out to be somewhere about 60000 dollars is something that you are losing here all right so 60 is something that you are gaining and 60 is something that you are losing as well so the net net effect on your portfolio is nothing but zero all right the net net effect on your portfolio is nothing but zero now there are a uh, few drawbacks which you need to understand here one that this works only when there is a small movement in the stock price if there is a larger movement larger shift in the stock price this may not work uh, you know uh, and that is something that we call gamma risk all right so one thing that we need to understand is uh the reason why we call it dynamic hedging is because if we see movements in the stock price and it, and with those movements there will be movements in the delta there will be movements in the call option price so you need to keep on continuously monitoring it and at the very same time change your positions in the call options market all right as i told you initially with uh, when we were starting this video that uh you know now there is a, there has been a movement in the call option price uh, so there ha there will be a movement in delta as well and according to the new delta you will have to recalculate the number of options that you'll have to you know go short so you'll have to keep on making those changes to in order to make sure that your portfolio is completely hedged there will not be any movement uh, of the total value of your portfolio all right so that is something that you need to keep on doing on a regular basis in order to make sure that there is a hedging all right and the reason why we call it dynamic hedging is because we'll have to keep on monitoring it and keep on uh, account for those changes that are happening in the stock market all right so that is one thing and what you need to understand so according to the bsm model what we generally say is that the movement in the stock price is generally continuous all right so in case if it is a continuous movement in the stock price we'll be able to you know look out for those small small changes and we'll be able to you know work out the dynamic hedging but whenever the whenever there is an abrupt change or whenever there is a jump in the stock price and that is not in our control or we are not able to take action immediately all right while that movement is happening while that jump is happening in that case we'll start to lose out on money in the case of delta neutral strategy because it would actually not be you know completely hedged so that is something that we need to understand and that is where your second order uh, option greek comes into the picture that is gamma all right so as i told you in the previous video as well so delta accounts for these small changes but given that there are bigger changes you know as as was the case in the uh, in convexity for fixed income whenever there are these big changes we need gamma all right so in case of that so that is why whenever we are accounting for the small changes delta works but as soon as we have big changes or we have abrupt changes in the stock prices we need to account for gamma as well and since we are not doing that in this particular example we are exposed to gamma risk all right so that is something that you need to understand because the moment in gamma is you know really uh, different from that of delta all right it really depends whether you are in the money at the money or out of the money and how things are moving there all right so that is something that i wanted you to understand there is one more small topic which we can discuss right away is of implied volatility all right is of implied volatility so generally what we were doing till now is say for example we were calculating the price of call option using bsm model 
all right so in that case we had various imports we had d1 we had nd1 we had multiple you know inputs coming in we had the risk free rate we had the volatility all those things coming in and then we were arriving at the call option price now to calculate implied volatility or what implied volatility really means is say for example let's take the price of call option rather than calculating it given as given in the stock market or as given in the exchange market all right so say for example whatever price we have in the market that price we are going to consider it as final we are not going to recalculate the fair value or something like that we'll keep that as final say for example it is five dollars a call option with a particular uh, excise price and a stock price is available at five dollars with a given time to maturity so now we'll we'll plug in this value in a bsm model of five dollars so we'll have the left hand side all right keep on imagining the numbers with me we have the left hand side that is a call option that we generally tend to calculate and what we need to do now to calculate the implied volatility is to back calculate things and reach out to implied volatility however you don't really have to do it in the exam or this would not be tested but you need to understand the essence of it that something that here what you're doing here is you're back calculating something so you have the call option value already coming in from where from the market all right the idea is pretty simple say for example uh, you know generally what you tend to do is uh, in the case of kpm that is capital asset pricing model what you tend to do is you put in the risk free rate you put in the beta as you put in the rm you put in the rf and then whatever number comes in that is nothing but the cost of equity so what i'm doing here is i'm giving you a cost of equity already you need to back calculate and give me the beta all right so you have the cost of equity here rf you already have beta you don't have rm minus rf is something you already have all right so you need to shift things from the right hand side to the left hand side and give me the beta in the very same way that would that will call it implied beta but here what we are doing is we are calculating implied volatility which means that we are having the call option value or the put option value and then we are putting that value and then we are back calculating for our volatility that is something uh, that is something that we call it as implied volatility i hope you must have understood derivatives thoroughly make sure you practice the questions with me and go through derivatives multiple times before you appear for your exam because the topic is tricky you know you can uh, you can tend to forget a lot of things in derivatives uh, we have bsm black model bsm model black model binomial model put call parity then we have various other forward commitments to calculate the value of it price of it there are different conventions that we need to believe in before we you know reapply uh, apply there so all those things you know could be become a trick, uh, could become a tricky business and hence i would request you to you know make sure that you keep on revising the subject at least once monthly once you are done with it uh, in the initial phase all right thank you so much